Welcome in to the DNVR Avalanche Podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNVR when you sign up for a new account to get amazing odds boosts. Again, it's that time of year. Rudo, AJ, Megan coming to you live. Uh, we're going to be roasting some rosters today, including our own. We have our own very terrible ideas to laugh and make fun of. So at very least, make sure you're dunking on us, if nothing else. I would like to first call out the coward Jesse finding <laughs> reasons show, to yeah. not to not make a roster to get roasted for today. He, um, he, he sprinted out of family sports. <laughs> we should we should all know that he is the true coward of the day. He but. cloned yes he cloned Polyarvi and traded for him twice. <laughs> Exactly. the 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 real the real roasting should be uh, at Jess at Jesse. I don't know what his actual I don't know what his actual Twitter handle is anymore, but tweet at that guy. He is deserving of the real roasting. There you go. You can dunk on him. Uh, we have selected ten listener rosters as well, but I do want to thank everyone who submitted. I think there were well over a hundred. I promise. I looked at them all. Uh, but we had to distill it down to a show that we could finish in like an hour or so. <laughs> I was texting Rudo in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah. These submissions are incredible. <laughs> I want. I do also um, really just really quick before we get going. Like I do want to say that the uh, support for this is awesome. I think it's super so cool. fun every year, um, and I'm. I'm I'm really thankful everybody that participated and everybody that floods the the board every year the the cap friendlies be a GM tool just gets filled up with DNVR stuff. Um, I think it's awesome. I love you guys. I love that. I love that there's enthusiasm for this dumb idea that we had a couple of years ago <laughs> to just be like, hey, we do this anyway. Let's just everybody go hard into it. Um, I think it's I think it's really awesome and. Um, I just want to say thank you guys for all of the support for this. I think every year when uh, it gets a little bit bigger, it gets to five, six, seven cap friendly pages of DNVR just flooding the abs page with stuff. I think it's awesome. And when I, I love when uh, uh, fans of other teams get annoyed at seeing it <laughs> because our community shows out so strongly. I think it's so awesome. So. Thank you guys. I think it's super cool. I I just love that we get to do this stupid thing where we just dunk on each other twice a year. It's great. It's honestly great. Uh, there were a lot of different options out there. I don't know. Should we start with one of ours though? No, we're start. We're doing it at the end of the period. End of period. All right. All yep. right. We'll leave. We'll leave it to Tiff to pick one of the listener ones. Then anyone you want. All right. I don't know who made this one. Oh, she does. It's written right there. Skywalker 87. All right. One of us did their job for today. It wasn't me. Uh, this one I thought was pretty interesting, mostly because of the deal centering around Reinhardt and the whole Florida situation of if there's a world where they become a seller. Uh, obviously, you guys know my love for Reinhardt. The Reinhardt deal is a first in Oscar Lawson as well as Nathan Clerman for Reinhardt half retained. Don't see Florida retaining on a two years left with Reinhardt, but we'll just throw it in there. And then they also go get Jake Wallman from Detroit for a fourth. Uh, this one is Can cap I... compliant, I will say. Good job there. There were quite a few that were not cap compliant. <laughs> well, what was that, AJ? Can I can I just say Jets decline? <laughs> Jets decline. <laughs> Somehow, somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Every, I think by default, every, every. Yeah, every. I didn't see that. Yes, Zach gets it. I love that. <laughs> I, I. Uh, is there so, a single trade I looked at that didn't have someone saying X team declines. I don't know. <laughs> probably not, dude. Those guys are those guys are intense about it over there. Uh, so there are some obvious problems here. Um, your roster is too big. Uh, you have a twenty-four man roster. I mean, uh, England just gets sent down. I think that's pretty well, easy. Well, but... like, or Morgan or McDermott, like, whatever, right? Sure. Like, whatever you want to do. But, so that's that's an obvious problem just to start off with. The other problem here is that Jake Wallman's been, like, a breakout star for the yeah, Detroit Detroit's defense this not year. not about to move that guy. Uh, for a fourth-round pick. 
there's no way they're going to move that guy. They're going to they're going to keep that guy around for as long as they can. He's been he's been one of the uh he's been one of the the actual genuine bright spots for them. So, that's a problem. But the uh the Reinhardt value I think is I I Clerman Clerman Honestly, is weird. I I think the first there. of Lawson is fair, but I think that's enough. Um, I don't know if Clerman yeah. moves the needle or if they're just trying to offload Clerman. <laughs> yeah, that, the Clerman that's, edition seems super random for sure, it, it, <laughs> and that's that's what caught my eye because I'm like, yeah, first and Oscar Lawson's a good start for Sam Reinhardt. You would need more than that, but you think? I, I, I mean, do. Yeah, think. you you probably need a roster player for Florida. But. They they're also a team that has designs on competing and being competitive and whatever, and uh, retaining that much money for multiple years is something that yeah, they're not I, going to do. I agree with that. The retention isn't going to happen. The thing is, like, you send. Anglind or Malgin down, and you're cap compliant anyway, even if you don't have them retain, so it's fine. Yeah, I mean, in this case, you could you could also IR Darren Helm, as Brad yeah. mentioned in the comments. Like, Plenty of options where, like, the retention doesn't end up mattering this year, at least. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Um, you would need more than that. I, I just felt like the Clerman thing. What a drive by! <laughs> like I hope Nate Clerman doesn't check these. <laughs> I mean, I, I does would Clerman care? He's not playing for Florida anytime soon either. So, yeah, who's who is their AHL affiliate anymore? I don't. I'd have to look. I feel like I should know. I I don't I, do they. I used to know all of the affiliates, and there's been so much movement over the last few years that I've totally lost track of it. It's Carl. Okay. It's, it's the Checkers? Yeah, so who's Carolinas? <laughs> Rockford. Yeah. Carolinas with Rockford now, that's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because Chicago, yeah, okay. Got it. All right. AHL be wow. like that. Yeah. Anyway, Nate Clerman, future Charlotte Checker. <laughs> maybe because i feel like his opportunity in the american league this year was born about through injury and call-ups i don't know if he would stick on a different ahl team or not that Very is fair this is not fair to nate clearman he did not ask for this might be a yeah. future florida everblade instead uh, anyway, AJ, is there a specific ad you think would work for Reinhardt in the fantasy land where Florida is actually moving him? Barons. Do you think that much? I do, unfortunately, yeah, because I'm Reinhardt. Reinhardt is a thirty goal guy. That's a yeah. that's a that's a. If you're going to talk about him as a two C, he's one of the better two Cs out there. Um, if he's uh, if he's going to play wing for you, I'm not adding Barons. So. It kind of depends on it. It kind of depends on what your plan for him is. Um, I know that there's, especially on cap friendly, a heated debate about how much of a center <laughs> Sam Reinhardt is. <laughs> those guys, those guys love to look at faceoff numbers and determine if that means a guy is a center or not. Um, sure Nathan McKinnon's a center, then. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Let me tell you the tale of Gabe Landeskog, but okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, so with Reinhardt, I do think it would take another legitimate piece. Uh, before I would add Barons, I would consider adding the 2024 first as well. Okay. I, I, it'd be a tough sell. As much as I love Reinhardt, giving up essentially three firsts is pretty tough, man. Yep, and with the year that he's having especially, yep. I would not be in a hurry to do this. All right. One down. More to go. What's next on the list, Tiff? Who we got? This one from... Lightning 95. I think I got your name right. <laughs> oh, yeah. This one, uh, this one was like all over the place. First of all, Whoa. you're like way overpaying for Sean Monahan. Like, <laughs> that is a <laughs> if Ken, if Ken Hughes got that phone call, <laughs> he's dialing into the NHL as fast as possible. He is double checking to see if this is a prank or not. <laughs> Or if, like, one of C-Mac's kids got hold of his phone. <laughs> uh, and then I 
I think you actually might be underpaying for Luke Shen just because England and Yelchenyuk have no value. I could see Vancouver loving Andreas England as yeah, much maybe. as I agree with you. I also love the idea, and it never once occurred to me to trade Alex Galchenyuk. Like, it never occurred to me to be like, oh, yeah, he's a totally tradable piece. Some people think, take him. I thought about it, but I feel like his reputation hasn't been rehabilitated enough, like, to be that much of an asset. I think through the Avs organization, we've seen the improvement, but I feel like a lot of teams would be really leery of him because of what followed him before he came to Colorado. The thing is, like, I think some of the teams that could theoretically be interested in him probably don't care. They just see that he's destroying the AHL on the offensive side. But I agree with you. I don't think he'd have very much value. It just could be like a throw-in piece that some team might get you over the finish line for. Um, maybe that was the point. Maybe that got them over the finish line for Luke Shen. I I don't. I still don't know that the fourth is enough, but it's not. Uh, and then I think you probably underpaid for Puljujarv too. I think they would want at least a fourth for him. I think I think if Edmonton was willing to accept that kind of deal, then Puljujarv would have been moved a long time ago. Yep, I agree. Um, yeah, I think it it's still with no retention. His salary poses a little bit of a problem for Puliarvi. Yeah, definitely. One one hundred percent agree on the salary being a uh, a thing on that guy's trade. Uh, so you end up in this weird spot where you down the middle. You now have Sean Monahan as your two C but you're now missing Alex Newhook in your depth. So your third line is Evan Rodriguez and JT Confer in a world where Gabe Landeskog is back healthy. Um, it still feels a little bit weird with the depth, especially because we don't know how healthy Darren Helm actually is. And are you dropping in Ben Myers at 4C there? Maybe. Yeah. I just... I struggle because I don't know how much better you actually are with Sean Monahan in your lineup. It well, and is he even in your lineup? The guy's currently right. hurt. He has to be healthy too. Fair point. Like you traded, you gave up Alex Newhook, who right now is a better NHL player than Sean Monahan, simply by the factor of he's in games, <laughs> and then a first round pick, uh, in and a twenty twenty five. I have. I, Montreal might be confused. I mean, they're still saying yes to this. Like uh, Montreal, <laughs> Montreal will have gotten a first round pick to take in Sean Monahan and then to get rid of Sean Monahan. And all the while, he played like an like a totally passable twenty five games and then got hurt again. This is like is is did Kent Hughes make this? <laughs> Like this is it could not the could not be any more favored for Montreal in that one deal. Uh and then Luke Shen and Yessi Pooley Yarfi just don't I don't think that they move the needle so much. Uh, that it makes up for losing New Hook and then Sean yeah. Monahan being hurt while you try and make your playoff run. I I'd like to think that Kadri just really likes playing with New Hook. Oh, wait, Kadri's in Calgary. I'm stupid. Uh, why did I think he was in Montreal? I don't know. Either way. Uh, yeah, I, I really struggle with, with that Sean Monahan deal. But I wanted to put it up there because I want to have an actual conversation about the Quite a few people that did trade for Monahan. What do we think would be a more fair value for that guy? Um, uh, Megan's face is my internal monologue. <laughs> Just don't trade for him is what that um, says. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a fourth round pick. <laughs> that low? Wow, just a just a fourth round pick by itself. Yep, that's it. I'm not giving you. I'm. I'll either that or I'll give you Nate Clarman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I, I I don't think Montreal would take just a fourth. I'll put it that way. I, I don't either. There's nothing I'm super comfortable parting with. Like, Ben Myers is my sneaky... He could really 
make something happen if needed to, but he wouldn't be worth it for this return. Like you wouldn't, he wouldn't be worth losing Ben Myers over Monaghan, but I feel like that would be somebody enticing. Even I think they'd be looking for like Ben Myers in like a second or something, probably. I wouldn't well, like, do it should... either, but Avs don't even have a second unless Montreal wants a 2025 20, well, second anyway. But to be to be honest with you, if Montreal hangs up on me because I wouldn't give them more than a fourth for Sean Monahan, fine. Yeah, because again, he's not currently healthy. Why do we pretend like Sean Monahan has a lot of value here? Injuries have played a major factor in his downturn as a player. He again. I think he had 25 games for the for the Habs this year, exactly. in which he was he was yeah. fine. It looked like he was on his way to rehabilitating some value here, and then got hurt again. The one thing he couldn't do. Yep. And it's been so mysterious his return from injury, and the timetable has continued to change. That if I'm Montreal, I'm panicking a little bit about getting any value out of Monahan at this point, because this injury history also follows him. Everyone else is aware of that, and he's currently plagued with something mysterious that I would be worried that you just need to move him for something, anything. That's why I'm giving him a fourth. Um, you know, that's it. And, and look, if they can't get a better offer than that and they don't want to take that because they say that's no, we're good. Okay, fine and move on. Good luck. Let him let his absence continue to drive your tank. I, you know, like I'm. Um, Sean Monahan is just not for me. Just how everything has gone this year. All right, all right. For a fourth round pick, I have no problem taking that chance and being like, "Hey, if we get really, really lucky, we got it." Everyone hates Sean Monahan. Let's do one more viewer. That's not nice. Show viewer uh, roster, and then we'll get to one of ours. This one from Total Defense. Uh, oh yeah, I, I did this one because I was like, "Did Evan put this guy up to this?" Uh, he goes and gets Scott Lawton from the Flyers for Shane Bowers in a fourth. He gets Nikita Zadorov from the Calgary Flames for JT Comfer uh, and a fifth round pick. And then he goes and does the Patrick Kane thing, which he definitely underpaid for, but we'll get into that conversation. Uh, first of all, Nikita Zadorov is there's no way what JT Comfer is doing this year is value to get Nikita Zadorov on the back end, right? I, I look. I will just tell you, uh, Nikita Zadorov has been really good this year. He has his best year ever, I believe. But so is JT Comfer. So this You're is talking going about two guys in a few. But Calgary has kind of a tough position with their decor right now. They've had un- unexpected injuries crop up. That Zadorov is more important now than ever before, too, for them. And I don't think they could afford to give up. Any defenseman. They're, they're also just in that like weird like like they're in the Calgary zone again. Like what yep. do they do as a franchise? Yep. I don't know. Um. So yeah, I'm I'm with you. The uh the swap of Zadora for Comfort here uh makes you worse. It, it feels like both teams. Don't love it. Yeah. Uh, the Scott Lawton one feels not only cheap, but confusing to me in general. Uh, I know Scott Lawton is really, really well liked in Philadelphia, but. Um, <laughs> what? I, I just chalked that one up to a specific player that this person probably liked and uh, <laughs> moved on with my life. Is Is this. Did Scott Lawton make this? Maybe, maybe this is Scott Lawton's burner. <laughs> and the Patrick Kane price, a little odd. Yeah, the Patrick you're, Kane you're price s- is way low, way, well, you way s- low. You start with filler because Curtis McDermott, Dennis Morgan, you're like, what's going on here? But then a first round pick? <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it, the first is the only part that makes sense is the thing. And you're probably adding an actual NHL roster player and a prospect to that, not Curtis McDermott and Dennis Malkin. I don't I don't think that it's that much for Patrick Kane. Um, the money is too much. The market is going to be too limited. 
he he's had a great week, that's for sure. But um, I I don't think ultimately the price is going to come down to like a classic star player trade. I don't think it's going to be a first, a prospect, and a player. So what? Just a first in the prospect, or just a first in a player? I think uh, I think a, a, a first and I don't know a, a mediocre asset after that. So more mediocre than Dennis Malkin. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I don't actually think this price is too far off. I think this is probably just an axe to grind. I I think that price is. I agree with the axe grinding, but I think that price is low. <laughs> I think it's we'll see. I think I think it could be I think when it gets done it could be closer to where um where it ends up. For Patrick Kane? Yeah. I do think that moves happening as quickly as they have and the market drying up just a little bit has put him in more precarious position than it might be closer to that kind of return than people expected. Uh, I actually like in Maitland Bros in chat saying a first in Myers, I think could make sense. That is where, yeah, Myers would make sense there. I would fight somebody if that happened, though, because <laughs> I love Ben Myers. I think Ben Myers is going to be a really good player. You can't convince me otherwise. You just can't. I refuse. The only person in the world who can convince me Ben Myers is not going to be good is Ben Myers. That score sheet with one point on it in 30 games. I understand. I lived through I lived through Dom Toninato and Marc Andre Cliche, <laughs> and I can tell you this is different. I I don't disagree. I think he's an NHLer, but man, does that guy need to catch a break and get a puck I to go in the net? Don't want to spoil anything, but I also think Ben Myers is really good. But I think his path to the NHL through the Avs might be made more difficult, and I'm rooting for him to maybe go somewhere else. Rooting for him to flourish elsewhere? Oh my god, Megan traded Ben Myers. Maybe I did. We'll find out. Uh, it is time to bring up one of our rosters, but I'll leave it up to Tiff which one she yeah. wants to go with. Tiff gets to decide. Uh, okay, this one's mine. You traded Ben Myers too! I sure did. <laughs> Uh, I, I went the Chicago route. I went with Max Domi. Uh, and then I got a little bit weird because I took Jake McCabe away from Chicago as well. Uh, what and the then, hell do you need all these defensemen for? I, I, I'm running 11-7 in the playoffs. Because <laughs> 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 I went out and got Dmitry Kulikov as well. <laughs> so I went with an 11-7 roster. Uh, for Domi and McCabe, I gave up uh, the first and then an extra fifth, as well as Ben Myers and Sampo Ranta. Totally could see them wanting more than Sampo there. I I really don't know. I would struggle to give up Olausen or Foodie, but it, that might be what it costs. And then for Kulikov, I gave up a second in a million years from now and Shane Bowers. Again, I get that the second's a, a billion years away if you want to swap that cross the second round pick out for like a, a real prospect uh like an Ananin or something i could see that and i wouldn't be happy about it but i would understand it uh and then yeah max domi i'm i'd play him at 2c for sure uh and then i i've always loved jake mccabe so i i had to do him and kulikov uh yeah and then you end up with the with landy's back a third line of new hook rodriguez and comfer which is fun and like i said i'm going 11-7 uh, on this one fully cap compliant even with three scratches so i did my work aj has gone into his shell on this one <laughs> i don't I hate, hate this. the anaheim swap because like my ben myers conversation i think his path to the nhl is just not through the abs at this point and anaheim is a young team that might be able to give him opportunity so I like it for Sheen Bowers, the person. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think that's too much for Domi and McCabe. I could definitely see the second being an overpay for Kulikov, but I'm just so used to watching defensemen get absurd prices at the deadline that I made wanted to make sure it was enough. 
AJ just has nothing to say on this one. I hate this so much. What? Which part is your least favorite? One that you're running eleven seven in the postseason. Yeah, it's pretty I bad. Hate, I, know. I that's, hate that's it. It's pretty bad. I don't deny that. <laughs> truly, truly, truly hate this. Um, not a not a not a fan of that alignment and getting Kulikov and McCabe feels. Why? I, I if, if you got one of them, uh, I'm good with that. Um, the Chicago trade, I think, is probably too expensive for both. I'm not giving them a first round pick for those guys. Um, I, think, I, I I just don't know how you get McCabe out of there without the first on in, in that deal, like because the extra years on his deal are just too valuable. I think. I don't. So. I I hate it so much. That would <laughs> I would hate I would hate that that deadline. Um would frustrate <laughs> me a lot. I just don't you don't need to invest that way. Eric Johnson may come back someday. Yeah, he might. And then he can be the healthy scratch. I I just don't understand uh if you're willing to give up a first round pick uh, and and Ben Myers and Sample Ranta, like if you're going to give out those types of assets, go get good players. <laughs> Don't go get these mid ass dudes that are like they're fine NHLers. And you know that I share the love of Jake McKay, but my goodness. <laughs> I really wow. don't think I I gave up that much for the McCabe Nomi trade. I don't I don't think that's that much of an overpay. The Kulikov thing, I get it. I get it where you're coming from. It's really dumb to go get another defenseman. Do pick one of those. <laughs> you could do Domi and Kulikov, and I'm like, that's a good deadline. I'm there with you. Let's go. <laughs> but no first round pick getting getting involved. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I I don't know. I I think I think the first is is decent value there, but again, my theory with McCabe is you have a defenseman for the next couple of years to step into EJ's role uh longer term or, you know, whatever if you want to look at potentially moving Devon Taves next year. Yeah, we don't have to get into that conversation, but you've lost <laughs> AJ I just try to make AJ hate this as much as possible. <laughs> Trying to move top human. <laughs> you see how I retreated from the light and how I look evil? Yeah, you're definitely... There's a reason for that. You probably moved bottom human, so... I would bottom human? Lekin it. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> I would not... I would not move either of them. I'll trade, I'll trade you to Locked on Avalanche before I trade Devontae. Why is he bottom <laughs> human? <laughs> this is a... We'll talk about this off air. <laughs> yeah, this is serious. <laughs> uh, on that note, we are brought to you by the people over at Jive Hive. Don't be top human, but be high human. All right, that's what Jive Hive well does played. for you. <laughs> I'll give you a well played on that. <laughs> Go to JiveHive.com. That's J-I-V-E-H-Y-V-E.com to order today and get your weed delivered directly to your front door. You can schedule it for the future if you know a time when you're going to want to get delivered, or of course you can get it ASAP and get them to come out and deliver to you right away. I, again, we talk about it a lot on the show. We're a bunch of introverts, so we don't like going and talking to actual human beings. Uh, so we just go online and order our, our stuff there instead, uh, which is crazy. We all talk to a camera all the time, but actual people, I don't know about that, especially when I've smoked some weed. All right. I, you won't catch me talking to anybody when I'm high. Uh, of course you must be 21 plus. So jump on that, uh, Make sure you're good to go. Check them out at jivehive.com. Uh, they only deliver to certain areas. You can put your address in on their website. They serve Aurora, Greenwood Village, Monument, Fountain, and various era- areas of El Paso County. That's J-I-V-E-H-Y-V-E.com to get your buzz today. Weed's not your thing. I totally get it. We're also brought to you by Breckenridge Brewery, the official beer of DNVR. So if you're more of an alcohol fan, you can get Breck Brew in all of the 50 United States. You can go online to breckbrew.com, use their Breck Beer locator to find it. 
at a place near you. Uh, they have dozens of flavors. They have a flavor for everyone. My wife is super into their Palisade peach right now. So highly recommend that one. Uh, I, of course, am an Avalanche Amber fan because I like my uh, my beer straightforward and they're like the only Amber left on the market. So go check them out. Breck Brew, they're the, our favorites. Second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Now you all can feel better because none of your rosters will be as bad as mine. So <laughs> let's get to another Rito, viewer my, my... roster. <laughs> You're, you think? You think it's I worse do. than that? I do. <laughs> Uh, it might be tough to top. Uh, this one trades for Luke Shen, Nick Benino, and Max Domi from Josh Four. Uh, the Shen deal is a third, oh. and Alex Bocage, Nick Benino is Shane Bowers, and a fourth. Max Domi is a second, and Dennis Malkin. So I think the that's big a problem. Good Max Domi price. I like the I, Max Domi price. The only thing about that price is that the second is in 2025. I think it, at times it's hard to get teams to commit to picks that far out, but I agree. I, I think that's a reasonable Max Domi price. Um, the rest of it, I just don't understand the Benino deal. I just don't think he does anything for Colorado. You don't think so? Oh, what you tr- you probably traded for him from what you've told me. So, uh, I did not. Okay, <laughs> that's good. I'm just. I, Chad is also very anti Nick Benino, and I'm. I guess I'm surprised by this. Why? I mean, I know like Nick Benino has limitations, but um, he's on this roster as a four C. It's true. Like. Is the is the sentiment really that negative about about him? I don't know. I guess sentiment... this roster this roster does not include Landeskog in it. So where would Landeskog fit? What's yeah. Benino's role? Who's the cut between Cogliano, Nieto, and O'Connor? I guess. I think you can go a little bit beyond that as well. I just think there's better options out there. Puglia Yarvi, for example, if you're looking for that depth forward. I think well, I'm better than Benino. Well, the question is, are you looking for a depth forward or a depth center? That's fair. I just don't know that the Evs need a depth center. I, I am fully trusting Ben Myers, and we've fully ignored if Darren Helm gets healthy again, which seems like it might be on the table. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see the need just the way this is constructed. If Ben Myers is still here and Max is Max, yeah, Max Domi comes to the team, they actually have some options down the middle. Yeah, agree there. I, I on my roster, I domi at center, which would completely remove the need. Well, um, if you're gonna have Max Domi or JT Comfer playing at center, you'd want Max Domi. He would think so. Which, which frees up Comfort to play middle if he needs to wing. Yep, Comfort can flex for you for sure. Um, I, I did want to bring this one on there because this is, I think, a reasonable example that the Avs could do these things and not give up their first. If you're looking for a deadline like that. Yeah, could we pull that up again real quick? Because I just thought it was funny to look at the draft picks. Yeah, it's pretty empty in those <laughs> mid-rounds. <laughs> just, just the firsts. <laughs> like... We don't make mid moves anymore. We only <laughs> trade firsts for guys. Yep. <laughs> anyway, that's all I wanted to see. That was that was it. I just wanted to see the draft picks. I thought it looked funny. And so let me let me phrase it to you two this way: Is Max Domi the best the Avs can do without giving up a first? Would it take a first to get something more valuable than that at this deadline? Gosh, who even would it be? That's my question. Who would it be? Are you looking for someone that, like, are you looking outside of the centerman position? We've talked about that too. But even still, the price of the player plays a big role in this. It's why Timo Meyer we talked about, isn't in the discussion. Adam Henrik's hurt. Then there's just lesser options. No. Adam Henrik getting hurt and being out for. A while. Oh, yeah, it's a problem. Such Schultz a dick punch. A similar price point as 
a Henrique, and it's not bad, it's just not, and I don't see Arizona being super agreeable, um, unless the price is high, like we talked about. Yeah, thank you, Brad. See, Brad understands why I gave up the first for Max Domi and Jake McCabe. Gross. <laughs> Uh, all right, we can move on to our, our next roster here. Yeah, buddy, it's cold where I am. This house is cold. <laughs> it is cold up there. I can confirm. Me, yeah. could uh, it be Timo Meyer? The next person, Timo Meyer. <laughs> yep, yep. That's, uh, we had to put one Timo Meyer deal in this one. Uh, the price is outrageous that this guy Radev paid for Timo Meyer two firsts and Oscar Olausen. I think that's basically right. three firsts. Three firsts. I, I, it might well be the price, but I still think it's outrageous. And then the, uh, the Jack Johnson to shore up the defense. I, I think he overpaid for Jack Johnson. Yeah. Fourth, maybe, maybe be an overpay for him. Is it 2025 fourth to be clear? I, so maybe that, that brings the value down. I would give no higher than a sixth for Jack Johnson. If a fifth gets it done, you wouldn't do it? No. All right. Fair enough. Uh, so my question would be, in a world where the Avs were interested in Timo Meyer, does he move the needle enough to just implode your cupboards? <sighs> Absolutely. You think so? Yeah. All right. He's a, that's, a, that's a legit goal scoring power forward. You want to talk about being hard to play against? Having having a forward core with Val Nachushkin, Gabe Landeskog, Miko Rantanen, and Timo Meyer, I almost don't care who's down the middle at that point. I say almost because one of those guys is McKinnon, so I care a lot. <laughs> but whoa. Timo, Timo Meyer is really, really good. And I understand that his breakout has happened while San Jose has been shitty and everybody stopped watching. But guys, Timo Meyer is really, really good. Girls too. Timo Meyer is still good. Uh, can the abs bring him back reasonably is my question next. Tomorrow's problem. <laughs> okay. I mean, if you win a cup, you don't care, right? Tomorrow's problem. Straight up, man. Megan, any thoughts? Um <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm not feeling this one. I think that's just one too many first round picks. If there was a way, like even if it means a third piece is offered in some way, I'm just not comfortable with that much. It uh... If you're going to go this route with Colorado, the lack of pieces you're going to have is going to come hard and fast. I will tell you that very, very, very quickly. The Avs will have nothing left in the prospect pool. Yep. But I'm, I will, I'm sort of curious, like, why 2023 and 2025? Yeah, like, why not the 2024? <laughs> what does he know about 2024 that we don't, that he kept that first rounder? <laughs> Uh, all right. I was that two. We have one more viewer. One, I believe. For further, I mean, for the record, I would not do that, but I do. That's the part, uh, like, that's a Timo Meyer price. All right. all right, this one was weird. The middle trade was weird. So they go get Jesse Puyuyarvi for a fourth, uh, and then they go to L.A. and they give them the goaltender that they're looking for, along with Ben Myers and Evan Rodriguez, for Alex Turcott and Sean Walker. Whoa. Uh, and then they go to Chicago and pick up Jack Johnson, which makes sense, and then randomly Sam Lafferty also. Yeah, so just real quick, Sam Lafferty is a guy that they have asked for the moon on. Yeah, definitely uh, so... not going to get him, but... This price is not going to happen, but the player, you love the heart, you love the try hard, you love the effort and all that. Is that really what the Avs need? Uh, maybe next year, but with Cogliano and Helm and O'Connor uh, and, and Nieto, like, it seems like that job is actually pretty full. 
And I'm just spinning wheels because I'm still trying to process what the fuck that middle <laughs> trade is. I I don't understand it either, especially because like, what's your is is Eustace Annan then backing up for the Evs? Is it Jonas Johansson? This is wild. Well, they have Annan on this roster. Okay, so it'd be Annan then. But the real, like, I, Francois and Myers, okay, uh, kind of weird, whatever. But uh, Turcott and Sean Walker, well, we could talk about it, but Evan Rodriguez makes you immediately much worse. Yeah. Like, that's Pooley, Yarvi, <laughs> and Lafferty don't replace Evan Rodriguez. Yeah. So, my big question here is but why? You convince someone to love Alex Turcotte as much as you did? Look, love Alex Turcotte all you want. He is such a liability with his injury history. Yeah. His development has been hampered by it so much. And it's the type of injury that you absolutely worry about down the line. It's concussion. Yeah, I, I, I get the other two trades, I just don't understand how that one helps the Avs win right now. Yeah, the the other ones we can quibble about price, like oh this is too low. That's again with Puli RV. If I think if Edmonton was willing to take a fourth, I think it, they would have done this by now. Um, the other, but this middle one is mostly just a. In what way do you think this makes you better? Like, is, was this made by Sean Walker's agent? <laughs> he's that good trust us because sean sean walker is like league average and he's 28 years old it's not it's it's not like he's a you know it's it's not like he's a really but young that, guy with lots and, of upside and the thing is like just take evan rodriguez out of that trade and it's like okay myers for turcott i could see that two guys on the fringes of the nhl right now maybe you have belief that turcott will be healthy and can get to that guy mm -hmm. uh, la obviously would like a goaltender right now i think uh though they'd likely have to give one back in, in a move where they go get one um well and the abs just giving one away right right like i I could see a world where the Avs give up Myers and Francois for like the right package coming back from LA, but I don't think it makes a ton of sense. And then you throw Rodriguez into it and you're just, you're getting worse. So struggle with that one. Uh, all right. I don't know. It's either AJ's or, or Megan's here. I don't know which one though. So show me one Tiff. Oh, is this going to be mine? Just sure as is. just as this comment comes in about Nick Schmaltz making <laughs> me look like a genius. <laughs> uh, okay, so I traded for three guys who were named Nick. I did not mean to do that. I didn't realize I did it until later. <laughs> um, and then I traded John Luke Foody. Uh, we, our conversation yesterday about Billy Hainala, I got all horned up and decided to do it. So I, I don't even hate that. I, I do not mind the Hanola trade. Again, you can drop that guy in next year in EJ's spot pretty easily. More or less my plan. Um, can we, yeah, go back to this one. So you're getting Schmaltz and Bugstad for a first and a second and Olausen. I get Schmaltz is going to be here for a while. I get there's some long term to that. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. I forgot I'd added the second round pick. I only remembered Morgan Olausen in the first. The second makes me think I'm good with this deal again. <laughs> I yeah, I, I I would be a lot more open to it, I think, if it was the first in Olausen and you know Malkin, whatever. Um You think you could get Sealer for a fourth? I don't know, but I don't have any other mid round picks to play with. It's fair. That was my problem, man. I I looked and was like, well, is there maybe a prospect that I want to give them? But the prospect that I wanted to give away was the one that I had to use to get Billy Hainala. I mean, you could throw him Ambrosio, maybe. 
and then uh, and then you're you're recouping your value on McDermott at the bottom. That was a uh, I'm opening up a roster spot, and I was worried about the cap, uh, and so I just traded him to somebody I didn't like. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. I thought the I, I thought the ideas uh, I thought the idea of sending him to Minnesota with Ryan Reeves and whichever Middleton they have was funny. Dink. I just I just thought they I just thought it would be funny to have them have like the all goon squad that rolled out together and was like we we deter all the bad things together. All right. I did want to find a way to send Keaton to Minnesota somehow. I didn't <laughs> I didn't find a way to incorporate it because the Eagles actually need help. But <laughs> they do on defense for real. Uh, Megan, are you more confident in your team than Team Nick, or less confident? <laughs> are we calling this Team Nick? This is I, team I mean, Nick, we might yeah. as well. I actually have had this idea. If I was every GM, I would want a team made up of a man all just by the same name. I was thinking like Josh, <laughs> all just a ton of Joshes. I love this Nick idea. I do not love it coming at the expense of both Alasan and Foodie. Like, in totality. Obviously not what's, in one single transaction. What's, like, what high end is left in the Avs forward prospect pool? I guess Ranta, None. if you're a believer. None. You don't need yeah. high end, though. I mean, that's Again, true. That, with, with the addition of Nick Smaltz, you have your entire top six signed through the next several years. Your top six does not change except for injury. So you don't need to worry about high-end forwards, and that's with whatever Alex Newhook is going to become. He's still on the roster to become that. So I'm I'm all about that. This also guards against JT Comfort and Evan Rodriguez leaving because you can go and find middle six wings easier than any other position in the NHL. That's the easiest position to fill in the, on your roster, uh, as evidenced by the fact that they found an Evan Rodriguez last year, as, as evidenced by the fact that those guys are available every single year at the deadline. There's there's a million of those dudes that are available this year if we wanted to talk about wings, which we haven't really done. You know, there are so there are so many different ways to make that work um, that I'm I'm just not worried about replacing those guys, but it locks in my top six with the legit guy in Nick Schmaltz, who is a top six player an actual top six caliber guy. It gives me maybe the league's best top six uh, moving forward and gives me uh, uh, the, in totality, Nick Sealer is really good this year. That guy can just come in and take Eric Johnson's job while he's hurt. If he comes back, then we can have the conversation of who to play, whatever. I think that gives me a really good seventh option that I like a lot. Um, I didn't trade for him, but the other defenseman that I actually really liked, I can't believe his name is also Nick, but Nick Jensen out of Washington is the other one that I'm keeping a, a, an eye on, especially if they decide to sell. Um, and But it, Billy Hainala also helps me... Uh, Billy Hainala also helps me guard against the future, whatever decision they have to make with Devon Taves, Sam Gerrard, whatever, in terms of salary... That, that gives me Billy Hainala, Ryan Merkley, and Sean Barron's on defense as prospects that I could see in the NHL someday helping my team out. And I think I've just balanced my I, – I, I've balanced the organization a little bit more. Uh, I, have a, I have a 2C. Uh, I, gave up our, I gave up top forward – the top two forward prospects in Olauson and Foodie. But I got, a, I got a 2C out of the job, and I got a top defensive prospect that could play for me next season. So I don't have to go out and spend money on an Eric Johnson replacement. But have you considered Jets decline? Yes. <laughs> That's why I didn't publish this because I didn't want the Jets to decline. Honestly, um, I do sometimes wonder if he is valued like in our circles because we are so familiar with Foodie and if his mm -hmm. third round pedigree league wide still keeps him on lower notice than maybe he deserves. So, I think that's a very real thing because Hainala as a first round prospect will immediately have that. If a Jets fan looked at that, they would probably a Jets fan who isn't my wife looked at that would probably be like, no, because when I ran it by her, she was like, mm, okay, I okay. <laughs> uh, for the record, if you were trying to make a one named team, Michael would be your most effective name <laughs> to I go love for. Michael. Uh, 
Michael Amadio, Michael Anderson, Michael Bunting, Michael Callahan, Michael Carcone, Michael Dozato, Michael DiPietro, Michael Isiamont, uh, Michael Hutchinson. Uh, if you wanted to include Mike's, then you also get Mike Hardman, Mike Hoffman, uh, Mike Riley. And if you want to count him, doesn't really count Mike Smith. Not going to lie. Mike's are not very good. I don't think I want a team made up of all those Mike's. <laughs> Where's all these Knicks? No, all the Knicks are pretty too. good. We didn't even talk about Nick Bukestad being thrown into that, but he was my 4C. And that yeah, was entirely yeah. because I just wanted a 4C. I understand he uh, he looks like a tanker with the way he moves on the ice, but he's six six, and I just thought it would be fun to have a really big guy. You don't need four big guys when you have one really big guy. Is he does he count as two big guys? Sure. <laughs> so you only need two more. Uh, okay. On on that note. I would say that the 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 fire of the roasting is kicked up a little bit, so I need to get my Shady Rays on. Here. <laughs> uh, we are brought to you by Shady Rays. You can go get your sunglasses from ShadyRays.com, or they have a physical location in the Park Meadows Mall. They have tons of different types. Highly recommend. Uh, I recommend you get cool ones, like the cool kids like I have, or you can do what most of DNVR did and get some aviators. Uh, they have tons of other shapes, sizes, something for everybody, even uh, ski and snowboard goggles if you're a, a mountain person like that. Uh, and when you order at ShadyRays.com, you get 50% off when you get two or more pairs with code DNVR. So be sure to jump on them like that. I can confirm the polarization works really, really well. They actively help probably everyone on this podcast not get migraines from staring into the bright lights on the set. So uh, if they can do that, they can definitely help whatever. I mean, don't stare into the sun, but that's bad for you. But if you were going to do that, these would help. Uh, <laughs> check them out again at Shady Rays. Dot com. And we're also brought to you by the people over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, you can win a little bit of money over there, and then you can go get yourself some Shady Rays with your winnings. Uh, you must get over there. You must use the DNVR code. When you sign up for a new account, you can bet $5 on whatever you feel, and you get $200 in free bets just for doing it. You don't even have to get the bet correct. So get over there. Bet on an Avs game. Bet on a Nuggets game. Bet on a Mammoth game. Bet on spring training baseball games if you want to do that uh I, there's all sorts of other crazy things you can bet on at DraftKings. i i literally can't even tell you let's go into the pools let's see what weird pools they have going on today uh yeah none, none of these are too crazy these are these are all like normal sports uh hey uh yeah yeah i mean yeah you can you can bet on fake wrestling the wrestling that's scripted where people already know the outcome. You can bet on that. So, so the NFL. <laughs> hey, got them. Uh, you can also bet on the NFL. If that's your thing, uh, you can do it with parlays of games or same game parlays. If you want to up your odds, either way, head over to DraftKings. must be 21 or older Colorado only other terms, restrictions and conditions apply. See the show notes down below for details. Uh, and of course, if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. Third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook roasting rosters. I don't know what's left. I don't know what, what uh, viewer ones we have left. So let's bring up the next one. Oh, uh, yeah. So I thought this one was interesting. Targeting Mikhail Granlin from the Nashville Predators. Uh, the, pretty the out pick, of left field. Yeah, it, it it's a little random, but I thought it was interesting. The value of this trade is all over the place where the Avs give up a first, a third, and a fifth. But they also get a second back from Nashville. Hell yeah. Along with Granlund. And then I don't really understand wanting to trade with Washington for Lars Eller and Trevor Van Riemsdyk, but they also well, did that. What's the what's not to understand? Lars Eller is a really good defensive depth center, and Trevor Van Riemsdyk's a right shot D that can fill in for Eric Johnson. Is he though? I think Trevor Van Riemsdyk is bad. Okay. 
Eller's fine, other than him just being expensive. I don't I don't really care too much on that front. I I do wonder if you could get a little bit better better value there, but if you think he's his defense is what's going to save you in your bottom six, fine, whatever. I'm okay with that. The Granlin conversation is the more interesting one because that is something you'd be you'd be committing to. I guess somewhat in a similar vein to Nick Schmaltz, but I'm. How do you two feel about Granlin potentially? Um, I don't. Big thoughts. I I think he's worse than Nick Schmaltz. Um, he's yes. he's not as good a goal scorer. They're about the same level of playmaker. He's cheaper, but he's older. Um. I yeah, I don't even know um, how much time Grandland has spent at center. In, in recent years, uh, I know that that was a thing that they tried with him in Minnesota for a little while. And um, I, it feels a little random to me, um, but he's not, so a, he's not a bad player. It just, sure. But why do that when you can do Nick Schmaltz? I mean, if you're willing to pay that kind of price, right? Like, yeah. Which I guess the price isn't isn't that. I mean, it's all obviously that's a lot cheaper than what I paid for Schmaltz, right. but you're getting the worst player I think in Grandland. He's also cheaper. I mean, his uh, cap is two less, two more less. Yeah, um, a, a five million cap hit is fine. Not a, what I, I yeah, I mean, I just don't think you're too worried about cap hit at that point, you know. It, it, when you're committing to a guy like that for multiple years down the line, it seems like you should target the better player. Well, yeah, and and my my guess my thing here would be that um, the fit is Grandland as your center. Um, sure, remains to be my biggest question mark. I can we can we talk about this this question that just rolled into chat? Did anyone here really target Lekkinen at all before last year's deadline? Am I high? Did we not have lengthy conversations about him before he yeah, came one to of Colorado? Our, our videos was on our, like our pre-recorded videos. One of them was on Lekkinen, right? Like I don't I don't remember if we did Lekkinen as a video or not, but I definitely remember we talked about Lekkinen in the days leading up to the deadline because his name was everywhere. It wasn't totally out of left field. Do you think they mean like if the league had him at the top of trade boards as a big name that was looking to be moved? Because I, I could see maybe that being the question mark. Is is there somebody whose name hasn't been thrown around league wide in that way? I, Chad says we did a video on him. Yeah, we did. Um, I, and I, I looked it up. I know that Megan, what you're talking about on trade boards, I know he didn't start there. But by the end of it, he was a guy that had was like showing up on Cervelli and Friedman's radar a lot. Like he he popped up somewhere on there. I don't think he was ever at the top, as you're saying. Um, uh, but I I could have sworn there was plenty of Lekin in conversation last year because I keep seeing this is like a really thing, like really common thing that I see tweeted about over and over uh, is that people are like. Oh, they're going to trade for somebody that nobody's ever thought about, like Lekkonen. And I'm like, yeah, no, he was on the sworn, radar. I could have sworn we did stuff on that guy. Okay, I just wanted to. I just wanted to see. I just wanted to see if I totally misremembered that or not. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't really think I wouldn't expect them to do that on the forward side either. Really, on the defensive side either. They're a guy that was like kind of like an oh I guess that was an option was the Matt Nieto deal that they already did. Yeah. That'd be the closest you would get to that. Um anyway, what well, do we have two more viewer ones? Uh this one from Acidel. Uh this is another Timo Meyer deal. But wow, this is a big one. This one also includes Max Domi and Jake McCabe from Chicago. For Timo, he gives up two firsts and Foodie. For Domi and McCabe, he gives up a fifth, a fifth new hook and Sean Barron's. Uh, 
which leaves them with a top six of Timo Meyer, Nathan McKinnon, Nico Rantanen, Arturi Lekkinen, Max Domi, Val Chushkin. And this one does not have Gabe Landis got back in the lineup. Um, and then McCabe slots in on their defense wherever you want. So similar similar cost price to what we've seen for Timo Meyer. Are you more comfortable with this price for Domi and McCabe than what I did? So I would. I hated yours. That's what I'm saying. And I would take that. Like you would take or... Rudos over this? Yeah. Okay. I. I yeah. I don't love giving up Alex Newhook. That's what I'm saying. And Barons. Oh. Uh-uh. Yeah, I'd like, Barons is like you're and... definitely overpaid. Okay. In 2020. Yep. <laughs> yep. Even if it's a fifth, you're still offended by that pick. Yeah, I I had to lower my voice a little on that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's more the a pick on top of those two guys, really. <laughs> Any pick. Uh, so Oscar Olauson survives. Yeah, yes. I guess uh, that's the one piece that is still in your system at this point. Cool. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Baz might as well not even show up to the draft for the next two years <laughs> in, in this case. I Do the Avs really need two pieces for their top six? Is that not just overkill? Well, and like Landy's not coming back in this in, in this s- situation. Scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you had Timo Meyer and Landy and... Domi to this to to the current forward core. That's kind of disgusting. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> you can't keep it, but it's pretty good. <laughs> and you have no defense for the next couple of years because Sean yeah. Barons is gone. Literally, your best defensive prospect is now Chris Romain. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if. Uh, <laughs> We can say Ryan Merkley's there in the conversation. Yeah, I just, I don't know what to count him as right now, to be honest. Yeah. Getting, yeah, getting McCabe back there is good, I guess. All right. I, I, I do like McCabe. I, I do think there's like a theoretical idea where the abs do go all in like that. We've looked at a couple other similar ones. It'd be really tough to give up multiple firsts and Sean Barron's and Foodie. At the deadline, I mean that's <laughs> your your cupboards are on fire at that point. At, at least, at least they did that, and it like Timo Meyer was involved. Because yeah, if you're not, value. if you're if you're giving up all that stuff, you got to get better. <laughs> you have True. to be able to look at your roster and say we are way better. Definitely true. And that uh, roster was, uh, as somebody mentioned, it was not cap compliant, but you could also LTIR it, EJ and yourself. Yeah, you, you could send Anglin down. There was a bunch of ways to get it LTIR or cap ready. Um, okay, we have one more viewer one to look at, I believe. Uh, this one was, I, I threw this one on here because I thought, what if the Avs actually did nothing? What if this was their deadline? I, <laughs> yeah. uh, I would be upset. <laughs> so we're not we're not on team stand pat. No, man. Did they I'm, even, I'm, I'm I'm not. They didn't even LTIR EJ. They still they just yep. They literally traded a fifth for Justin Braun. Uh did want to bring it up just because I wanted to get into the conversation of realistically, what do the Avs need to target? Is it just that two C and, a, and any defenseman? Is that what we're looking at, or can they get away with maybe not a two C necessarily? I don't think that there's a dire need for a two C. I think it would obviously help, but I'm open to the idea that they go and get a middle six wing somewhere, right. and that and they- that they. And then a defenseman of some kind, I assume. Yeah. Okay. Not I think a forward that. and a defenseman, uh, I think, would be good business. And if they really, really, really are worried about Frankie, um, check in on like Corpusalo and see what that is. 
there was a there was one that had Corpus Allo in a deal that we got. Just throwing it out there. Didn't put it on the list, but uh, all right, Megan's. I'm so embarrassed. You got. <laughs> Uh, gets yes! one for Curtis McDermott. Yes! Megan like is the best! <laughs> one for ones, Oscar Olauson for Ethan Bear. Wow. Mm. I fucking love that deal. Can I just say, it's because I know Vancouver has had interest in Olauson specifically, and I know they're looking at an extension with Bear. I know they really do value him. So it's not an easy yes from Vancouver, in my opinion, but because they have specifically scouted Oscar, that's why I thought maybe. I and also have interest in Ethan Bear long term. So I yeah, I yes. see him as a long term. He's young. He can play up though in the D court. Like I know he's a little bit of a project in some people's eyes, but he's ascended to higher role with Vancouver this year that I think in Colorado he could really thrive here. And then gives up Shane Bowers and Ben Myers and a seventh and a fourth for Max Domi and Ian Mitchell, specifically having Ian Mitchell for the Eagles. This Ian Mitchell feels... is like a Graves type where like he could be an Avs D prospect in the future, but he has not developed quite the way Chicago has hoped that I could see Chicago being willing to move on from Mitchell. Um, and the Eagles do need to have their decor bolstered anyways, but he could be a future defenseman for the Avs. This feels very much like if you love something, set it free. <laughs> it is, no, like actually, I'm so glad you said it because can you show it again? I forgot what I did, to be honest. I forgot the moves <laughs> that I said I would be making. <laughs> oh yes, no, this is exactly like Shane Bowers and Ben Myers. I want yeah. them to be in the NHL so soon. My only quibble is I don't think that's enough for Domi. You might be right. Uh, I think Ben Myers should get them I, I, pretty I, interested. I, I think Ben Myers is interesting. I think you can remove Shane Bowers from the deal entirely, and I think that fourth has to get bumped up to something more. Is your audio weird to just me? No, no. He occasionally okay, that, robots with that headset. It sounded like a little robot. Yeah. I'm willing to go up with the pick there, too. I just kind of like the idea of getting rid of McDermott and then using that to make a future move. This is honestly to free up a spot from McDermott. I am really believing in Andreas England for next year. And because of Chris Tanev and Michael Stone being injured in Calgary, that's the only reason I think Calgary might entertain it. Whatever the whatever the reason is, I'm all about it. Yeah. Same. So Troy Terry's hurt week to week right now. I genuinely considered a Troy Terry move. But oh, it's... he's back. He's, he's, back. he's back. He's back today, actually. Yeah. Oh, frick! All right, redo the episode. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Start it over. I'm gonna get yeah. new health, then, guys. It was it <laughs> it, it was the ball. weirdest. Like his injury was so weird because he got hurt. Nobody said anything about it. He skated once with the team, and then he's returning to the lineup today. All right. That Don't feel bad. That happened this morning, and the only reason I know is because he's on my fantasy team. Uh, just another so. reason we need the sports betting places to get the NHL in line with these injury reports, okay? <laughs> look, I all Zemgus jokes, I looked at a Zemgus deal to see if I could make one work that I was comfortable with, and the answer was no. Anton Heinen's in a weird spot with Pittsburgh. He's on such a team-friendly contract that I don't think they'd move him, but they're also not playing him. I don't think they would, though, because of how affordable his option is. He makes a good 13th forward option for Pittsburgh no matter what, and I just don't see them being willing to let go of him. We should, we should talk more about the Pens as the week goes on, because I think both the Pens and Caps are extremely interesting if either one of them decides that they're out of it we're gonna sell some some pieces here or there like uh, uh marcus Pedersen from pittsburgh would have my interest although that's more of a long-term commitment and not something i think the Avs could really get involved with on defense jason zucker at forward he'd be interesting i, I do think washington looks like the team more likely to sell right now but yeah 
I don't know if Pittsburgh would let Zucker go, but he has played up in the lineup beyond expectation this year. Like we did our draft in the season. And I said I would choose Pittsburgh bottom six, and he was a part of that. And mm. he has played above what I expected him to be. He's good, and he plays hard, and he's committed, and he's a great locker room guy, and everybody loves him. And I'm like, great, he sounds like an F. Let's do it. No, you're and... actually – he held an elevator door for me once. Sorry. <laughs> See? <laughs> great guy. <laughs> he was so nice to make him. Go get him. That guy, that meme of the guy like letting people into the club, that's Jason Zucker. <laughs> yep. That's, a, that's, that's Megan after people are nice to her. <laughs> <laughs> you're in exactly you're in the club you're uh, <laughs> yeah but okay. but on that point though you said Washington's more likely to be the one to sell but look at every defenseman that they have on their team and you see that that's it's an expiring contract yeah their whole defense the entire thing even their depth guys they have eight expiring deals right now and you could you for the Avs, um, Eric Gustafson. If you wanted a little extra offensive punch, could be an interesting guy. P.S. Best friends with Gabe Landeskog. They are homies that go way back. Um, Gustafson was one of Landy's groomsmen at his wedding. Um, so you have your connection there, where Landy could be like, "He's the shit." Also played in Chicago for a long time. The Avs are plenty familiar. Um. But Nick Jensen, Trevor Van Riemsdyk, like those are both guys. Like Dmitry Orlov would be the big name there, uh, but would also be the most expensive. And you know what's up. So, um, but I'm I I think that like Nick Jensen, Trevor Van Riemsdyk, those are two guys that I'm keeping a serious eye on, um, especially uh, especially because they both are right shots that play the right side. Uh, those are guys that, and Nick Nick Jensen stylistically fits Colorado really nicely. I I would definitely be interested in Nick Jensen, but Druin is a guy that I am going to start pounding the table for in the summer when he comes off the expensive deal. It'll be it will be interesting to see what the market is for him in the off season, but not. Today, not the time yeah. for that conversation. Com- Comtois, same thing. That's the, those are not in season moves for me. Those are all summer moves. Uh, either way, we appreciate all y'all participating in uh, in this roast my roster. We'll be doing it again come uh, free agency time. So we hope you will all participate again. Uh, for us, Jack Johnson video releasing today for our trade deadline targets. Uh, Three super yeah. chats. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's get to those. Thank you. $10 from The Juice, who says, one of the best days of the year. Didn't get my roster in because I've been too busy with newborn daughter at home, but just know that Cal Foot would have been an av in mine. Yeah, I don't think that would happen. But I'm here for it. Congratulations on your daughter. Indeed. Thank you very much, Juice. The amazing Drew with another $28 coming our way. Can't wait to watch the full episode when I get off work later. Just wanted to pop in and say thanks again for all the awesome content you guys provide. Here's to four more months of awesome abs hockey this year. Hope so. Hope we get that much more abs. I think this is the Drew that had Hellison and Troy Terry in his roster. Yeah, the Hellison move is not going to happen. I don't know why the Ducks would target him specifically last year. And then trade him the next year. Right back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the last super chat from name here saying off topic. want to thank you for all the watch longs. I work in a service industry downtown. So even when I know the final, the casual commentary and watch alongs are a fun way to watch after work. Much appreciated. Uh, we appreciate all of it. Y'all. Uh, like I said, Jack Johnson video tonight. Tomorrow, uh, abs are back in action. We have uh, the Pride Watch logged out at the bar if you want to come hang with us. Saturday, we have the party bus. I, there might still be a few tickets left for people that just want to go on the bus. Uh, but uh, the actual tickets have been sold out for a while now. Uh, either way, you can always come to the bar before or after the game and have a good time with us before we take the bus or after. Either way, works out. Uh, we appreciate 
everyone here a ton. I just want to shout that out again, reiterate it. I know AJ said it off the top of the show, but it's super awesome to see all y'all show out for the, the Roast My Roster stuff on Cap Friendly. Um, we will be back tomorrow. And uh, yeah, you know, if any random trade stuff happens, we'll panic and do an emergency pod. So one way or another, we will see you soon. <laughs>